let's upgrade our PC today. Techies and gamers, we're gonna upgrade this machine built in with the Ryzen 5 3600, has an RTX 3080 Eagle built into it, as well as 16 gigs of RAM. And we're going to go ahead and upgrade it right now. Stay tuned, techies and gamers, you're in for a blast. Maybe not. Work. What up, Tech and Gamers? It's Boy Jermaine with Tech Toys and Gaming, and in today's video, we are going to upgrade our little mini ITX PC that we have built a few years back, right? I actually went ahead and built a budget ITX PC for the purpose of gaming at 1080p mostly at super high frame rates, and um, lo and behold, as time went on, I found that I found myself, I found that I found myself. What? I found myself making incremental upgrades little by little on this ITX, just to kind of improve the performance and thermals. Little by little, step by step, I started outgrowing the box, techies and gamers, and it became no longer efficient for me, with the, especially with the huge implementation of an RTX 3080, which is the full-size graphics card. It's as full-size as it gets. So with the prospect of wanting to move all of my components to a slightly bigger box just for better airflow, so I can actually rock the PC with panels on it, uh, I ended up doing a little bit more. Okay, I was like, okay, let me uh, buy a new case. And with the case, maybe I can probably upgrade the processor. Sure, cool, I can go with the Ryzen 5 5600X or something beefier. And that's what I ended up doing. I bought a 5600X, which is a different architecture altogether. 5600 really being built in for gamers and gaming. So I bought the processor. And with buying the processor, let me uh, go ahead and upgrade my cooling. So I went ahead and bought a liquid cooler by Dark Flash. And let me upgrade the memory. I bought 32 gigs of RAM. And let me upgrade my life and I bought a new head. What? <sighs> All right, so you see where this is going. So this is kind of like a never ending story because now even with having built into this new machine, there are always upgrades and new technology being put out in the market. So we used to upgrade the machine to, I don't know, do 4K, 9,000 frames per second, who knows? This is where I'm at right now, Techies and Gamers, and I'm sure Quite a few out there have actually crossed this road and been in my shoes and some may be looking to be in my shoes or to actually upgrade and move their machines and components into a new sized or better uh, styled box basically for better air cooling, more space, more components, right? You want to build more components into your machine, you, you need the space. Uh, the ITX I have here is just couldn't fit everything. Not efficiently anyway, I've sacrificed a lot of things uh, including liquid cooling. I could not do liquid cooning. Cooning. What? <laughs> what is liquid cooling? That is a terrible phrase. I could not implement any liquid cooling inside of this tiny little ITX simply because there are no AIOs, no matter how thin and small, single, double, fan, just did not fit. It's just way too micro-sized ITX case for it. It was just made for low profile air cooling fans. So yeah, I was stuck with that, but um, since I have the space now, why not? Let's go ahead and throw in a, a dual fan. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw in a dual fan AIO. With this build, I'm hoping to actually reduce my temperatures, my whole cooling overall, especially with my processor. Um, with this machine, I was actually banging out quite a high temperature, uh, even in idle, right? Idle was like 45 degrees Celsius, and I launched an application or two, and I was already up in the 50s, easy tech easy gamers. So there was actually a good problem going on here with thermals, and I'm sure it had to do with the implementation of that new RTX. That just kind of really tightened the space in their tech the gamers. So uh, my advice to you is don't buy such a tiny case and build a huge card into it. You will find that you might come across problems such as thermals the way I have. All right, tickets and gamers with that. Don't forget to subscribe, like all that fun stuff, give this channel some love. Tell the algorithm what to do and don't let it just be arbitrary and beat me down what let's go through the speed build so you can see how i do it little by little step by step maybe not step by step because how could you go step by step if you're going so fast Why?
drop that.
Hi, Techies and Gamers. And with all that craziness done and said, this is the final glorious build. I will say that upgrading is not as straightforward as a process as it can be. Uh, my advice to you is to do lots and lots of prep and research before you jump into this, before you jump the gun, because a lot of things will not be compatible. Some things may not go as planned. So um, just be prepared for those things. Uh, in my situation, some of the hurdles I encountered was one, my motherboard died. Lucky for me, I had a backup motherboard because my motherboard actually died out somehow in the process from moving one, uh, moving from one box to the next. It just wouldn't work. I thought maybe it was the processor or whatever have you. Maybe the socket on the actual motherboard went bad. I damaged it. So whatever happened to my motherboard, I am totally to blame for it. I maybe moved the pin or broke something. Don't know for sure. Um, but luckily I had that spare motherboard, which was the exact same model. So able to switch that out as well as switch out the processor tech easy gamers. So let's talk about that. Woo, pain! So on my old motherboard, I actually had updated the BIOS on my motherboard, right? To the latest BIOS version for the B450i by ASUS. Now the 5600 is compatible with all AM4 motherboards, techies and gamers. So do not be afraid to actually purchase this if you are rocking an AM4 motherboard. Now the Ryzen 5600X is an unlocked six core, 12 thread CPU techies and gamers pretty robust with base clocks of 3.7 and you can actually boost these clocks up to 4.6 gigahertz which is quite snappy if you're looking to play some AAA titles at the top most end range uh, even in 4k that's my plan with this machine I will definitely be playing in 4k and 25 60 1440p 1080p definitely maxing out with the highest graphics levels as well as frame rates, techies and gamers. But the painstaking thing I did have to endure with this was that I actually had to use my Ryzen 3600 to first do the BIOS update. And then once I did the BIOS update, uh, take it apart, put in the new chip, and then it would work. Otherwise, out of box, the B450i will not work with the Ryzen 5 5600X. You will need, in fact, have to do a BIOS upgrade. <laughs> I learned that the hard way when I had to swap it out and totally forgot that I didn't upgrade the BIOS on the new uh, motherboard. The old one I did and it worked. And I was like, oh, cool, it works. Totally forgot to upgrade the BIOS and I put in my new chip and it would power on. I just would not get any display. I was constantly getting no signal. But once I swapped the chips back out, did the BIOS upgrade, put the chip back in and there you go. Voila, I was able to post and configure my new settings and the machine works like butter, mayonnaise, grease oil, and olive oil on top of your bread, what? So there is a mesh frame on the back of this so that your actual uh, AIO can breathe and pull air out from the inside and blow it out through this side panel. And in the front, I have some cool air coming in. And on the back, I have a small little non-RGB fan uh, pulling air out. So we have quite a few things, but the most uh, exclusive thing I like about this is that my RTX is actually breathing air from beneath the actual uh, PC. There is mesh underneath. So from beneath the machine, I'm actually pulling air in as well as pushing out. So this is quite the nice build. I think it's pretty ideal for uh, cool airflow techies and gamers. In an upcoming video, I will do some testing, some benchmarks, and I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison of what the machine actually can do now with the upgrades, with the new cooling, with the new case, as opposed to what I was getting with my old smaller, tiny little ITX. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna see a video on how I actually built that ITX machine initially a few years back, check the link right there. It's gonna take you to the video and then you're gonna get stuck. What? I also upgraded the RAM to a nice flashy little alloy RGB, 32 gigs, tech and gamer, so I was not playing around, so I was intending to make this machine not just for gaming, but it's also a high powered production machine as well. I also switched out the power supply to an SFX, tiny little uh, power supply, as opposed to the full size ATX uh, power supply I had in my previous machine. So it gave me a little bit more space in there, a little more room for air to breathe, better for cable management up on top, as you can see there. You barely can see any of those power supply cables coming out because they're coming out right from the 
actual ports of the power supply coming out the back and it allowed me to create a nice little cable management system out in the back. And speaking about the cable management, uh, at first it was a little overwhelming, but um, I got the hang of it as I drank more coffee and tea. What? On the back panel of the machine, there are quite a few, um, I guess, options for routing your cabling. So um, uh, if you have a lot of cabling, you build in a lot of RGB, there is ways for you to actually channel those cables efficiently. Though I will say there isn't that much clearance between the actual interior panel and the outside panel. You may have like an inch of space or so. So um, use your space wisely. Um, but luckily with this case, you actually get these little metal brackets that actually can hold your cabling into place. There are one, two metal brackets that you can actually just overlay over your wires and screw in and it keeps it nice and tucked. And then you have two others, one up on the top right and bottom left where you can channel your cables nice and tidy uh, using that Velcro system. So I found that with this case, I barely used any of those plastic black ties. Very minimum. I will say I probably use five or six ties at most with all of that cabling. So uh, compared to my previous case, I used like 80,000. What? So the cable management turned out pretty good and the actual back panel locks into place quite nicely. Um, the actual rivets that hold it into place are pretty snug. So when you snap it on, uh, you'll find that even if your panel is bulging just a little bit, it will not open Tech Easy Gamers, but just be mindful of your bulge. But luckily there is actually a screw port. You can actually add a screw. I don't know why this case didn't come with that additional screw, but I actually had a spare screw on deck and I screwed it in and I don't expect this panel to be going anywhere no time soon and i have a very minimal bulge considering i actually added these uh threaded cables here for my graphics card as well as for my motherboard power supply so that it kind of extended a lot of my cabling into the back because i wanted to be a little bit flashy you don't have to take easy gamers but that came at a cost which caused me to have to cram a little bit more cabling into the back but it, that lets you know that there is quite enough space to even put a little bit extra into it, Tech and Gamers. The case itself has its own ARGB built-in uh, controller in the front of this at the bottom. So you don't actually have to go ahead and spend the extra money to buy a full-fledged uh, RGB controller, Tech and Gamers. You can just utilize the one that comes built in on the front panel uh, with my AIO that also came with its own little miniature built-in uh, RGB, ARGB controller, but I kind of combined them together is to make it one and the parent controller on this machine is the one that is built in to the actual case like the gamer. So I'm using that to control it using the Aura Sync uh, software to control all of my lighting and special effects. So yeah, I don't need an added controller. Now when building this, I also made sure to keep the back AIO a radiator clear of any cabling or obstruction because I don't want a lot of that heat, especially if it gets a little bit hot, to be uh, blowing on those wires. Now, I don't know if that's going to probably cause any problems or damage to the cabling or some kind of static shock or something, but I kept it clear so that I can get a nice full ventilation going on in the back with no obstructions other than this little mesh grill that's built into it. Now, for ports on the front of this bottom grill, you actually have well, not a lot going on here. For front I.O. ports, you have two USB-A 3.0 ports. You have a Gen 2 USB-C port, as well as a combined audio and microphone, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. And you have a reset and RGB modes button switch. Now for cleaning the front panel when it gets dusty is kind of easy. Um, there is no handle or anything to kind of pull the mesh off. I found that I have to actually find the grooves here on the side and kind of tug at it. And then you can just pull the entire mesh out like that, Tech Easy Gamers. And this is the way you can clean this mesh, but also not just clean this mesh, but this is the way you also can actually access the bottom mesh panel as well, Tech Easy Gamers. So if you want to clean out the mesh on the bottom, you have to actually pull out the entire front panel, which is a little bit of an annoyance if I wanted to clean out that bottom screen but um yeah at least they included that tech and gamers and i do appreciate that if you have any questions regarding this build just go ahead and leave it in the comments obviously uh 
I would have continued to go on and on. There's just a lot to talk about and to go over and to think about and discuss regarding you know, upgrades and building into new cases and the performance and the thermals. So go ahead and leave those comments down below and I'll see you in my next video, right? Which will probably be this, maybe not. I don't know. Subscribe and find out. Later.